Let's talk about that um, a little bit. I, because you know, when, when a pandemic hits, um, it, well, I'm saying when a pandemic hits, like it happens every year. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, but let's say, like, you know, when, when this, when something very disruptive happens, right? It's, it's almost like all the, your assumptions and everything just goes out the window. And um, suddenly it's like this new normal, so to speak, right? So, so when it hit, like you, you said that you guys were really worried and you know, I, I mentioned a whole bunch of things like supply chain, delivery, blah, 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 and all of these have, you know, have been affected. But how did you guys think through this whole process? Like, did you make a sort of some kind of quick plan? Like, look, here are the areas that we are going to be seeing the most risk and this is what we're going to do about it. Like, what was your thinking behind how, how did you prepare for this? I mean, it's not a great word, but probably the best thing I could come up with. Yeah, so, so the first immediate reaction we had was we need to create a contig contingency plan mm -hmm. for, for different scenarios. Um, worst case scenario, best case scenario, and kind of average case scenario. Right. Um, I, I will also say that we've, we've had a lot of support from our investors. Mm -hmm. So um, they, like when this, this whole thing started happening, they also reached out and they said, we will help you, you know, come up with this plan. We will see what are the best, um, the best situations for, for, for all of the companies, all of the companies in the portfolio. Um, you know, basically they, they offered a lot of assistance early on and a lot mm -hmm. of support, which kind of helped us keep going because we didn't feel like we were alone and we didn't feel like, you know, we were the only mm. ones having to figure this out. So I, I, I mean, I'm so thankful for that, honestly, because it's like we had other people to rely on other people to talk to, uh, talk to other startups as well to hear about what they're going through. So was um, that advice so we, more of like a process thing where they said, all right, Christina, like, yes. here's what you should be thinking through, or is it something else? Well, it, it, not necessarily like what we should be thinking through, but they they highly encouraged us to start working on a plan mm -hmm. um, in order to to like see where we will be three months down the line, six months down the line, and twelve months down the line. So right. that's what we did, and we we created different budget scenarios basically, and we um, you know the worst case would be that like our sales drop more than fifty percent. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and then also like a best case scenario where uh, we are continuing to grow around 10 to 15 percent per month. Um, so. So, yeah, we so they they kind of helped to guide us through that process. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I obviously like I had conversations with them and, and showed it to them and and basically showed what we need because we're currently raising. So, mm -hmm. so we're in a difficult wow. time right now because <laughs> right. we're fundraising and I was already, so I have, so basically I've been reaching out to several angel investors and, um, things were totally, you know, secure, moving forward, moving in the right direction. And then three of them decided to hold off. Mm. And this, you know, and I, I totally did not see that coming. Um, we have other ones that have decided to move forward and have the, and believe that now is the time more than ever that we do need that financial support. Mm -hmm. So, so it's kind of split half and half. Um, you know, there's those that don't want to take the risk, which is completely understandable. And, you know, I, I don't know what I would do if I were in their position, but, um, you know, some have chosen to take the risk and some have not, um, so, so that's something else that we're, we've had to take into consideration and had to show them as well, you know, this is how we're going to mitigate those risks. And this is how we see ourselves uh, moving past the, past this crisis uh, and where we see ourselves six months down the line. Right. So, so it sounds a lot like this risk mitigation plan, so to speak, like the scenario analysis has been very helpful with managing all the stakeholders, right? Because, you know, when I think as entrepreneur to entrepreneur, we can, we can agree that we're not alone in this, like we are kind of alone in the decisions, but our business health depends on so many other people around us that we have to actually manage everyone's expectations. So in your case, you have investors, we have employees, customers as well. Um, so that's like a really great point, I think, for anyone listening in right now is like, go make a scenario analysis, um, like what Christina just said, right? Um, like, think about your best case, worst case. And like, so, and the, what, what you said that I think that was really interesting is that like, no matter 
how well you planned it, it sounds like you had a little bit of your worst case and a little bit of your best case and all of this happening at the same time. But so, so talk us through that. Like, so how did you, um, like, like what, what did you do with that? Did you just think, um, all right, I'm going to take a little bit of what I planned for the worst case, a little bit of, so was it like, did you segment it by um, like sections? Like, okay, my supply chain is currently in the worst case situation, so I'm going to do that part of the plan, but my sales are in the best case scenario, so I'm going to do that part of the plan. How did you, <laughs> how did you make it work? It's, yeah, it, that's a good question. It's, um, that's, can you hear me? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Good. For a second. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, all, all of that. Um, uh, basically, the number one thing that we were worried about was supply chain. So, the first thing that we did was, um, so, I mean, I, I didn't talk too much about the business, but we, we run kind of, uh, inventory and dropship model. So basically we hold some inventory and we do a lot of drop shipping for products that we don't, uh, you know, don't want to carry several sizes in and, and run the risk of, of holding that inventory and having it sit on the shelves. Sure. Um, so, so basically we were at a point where, you know, we, we had um, calls with all of our suppliers um, and we mainly, we mainly source products from the U S and from Turkey. Mm -hmm. And, we were so worried, which is what happened, that some of them would stop operating. Um, I, we have a couple in California completely closed down right now. Um, so basically, what we decided to do was actually place inventory orders of our best-selling products. Um, mainly, I mean, we have been in the business for a couple of years now, so we do understand uh, our shopping habits from our customers, and we do, right. we can, we can basically forecast our inventory orders and make those uh, decisions confidently because we know, you know, what sizes they're going to order. We know what colors they like. Um, so now we're in a position where we can actually make those informed decisions. Um, so, so what we did was we placed, in, we placed some orders because we, our biggest concern was that we weren't going to be able to get products into the country uh, mm -hmm. and into our, like to our logistics partner. Um, so, so that was the first thing we did. We didn't even consider our budget at the time. Um, we basically mm. like, we cut, we cut salaries, um, in order to make sure that we could place those orders on time and get them into Saudi Arabia. Um, and, and that was like, that was the first thing we did. And we just had to go forward with it. And we had to explain later to our investors. <laughs> That this no, is what we did. And these are the, I mean, you know, and 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 actually, I, we got an email to two days ago from our uh, logistics partner, saying that they've completely closed, um, mm -hmm. and and they're not operating at that moment. But I I, I spoke to the CEO, and he said uh, it'll most likely just be two days of, of of closure because they had to they had to get the right permits to operate during curfew hours right, so, so they and they just got the and they just got the permit okay. um but i i freaked out High and five. i was like oh my god our, our business our business has uh like that's it we're done um but you know i mean it wasn't like it wasn't that extreme um but yeah we we really wanted to make sure that we had our our uh our inventory in the country so that we're not in a situation where you know products are getting stopped or you know flights are stopping delivery stopping being delayed sure. um, so we've kind of in a way almost switched our business model because as a result Less because of right? yeah and which was our plan mm -hmm. in within 18 months was to reduce drop shipping anyway because it's just longer delivery times. It's more expensive. Uh, there's there's so many factors, uh, you know, that we've been wanting we've been wanting to eliminate dropshipping for a very long time. So so maybe this is kind of like the right push in the right direction, uh, in a way. Uh, not I don't want to say thanks to the the epidemic, no, I, I but gotcha. in a way, you know, that I mean, is the case. It, it's affected change in 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 every industry i think so it's almost like accelerated timelines it's like killed off things much faster than um you know like ideas um yeah but i want to i want to just go back to that point you were making because essentially what we've been talking about here is like this idea of like you know mitigating risk but 
it looks like the kind of risks that you've identified were essentially just to ensure survival, right? Like how do I keep running my business um, during this crisis and what are the things that could potentially stop it? So like obviously as an e-commerce brand, if you don't have inventory to sell, then you don't, there's no point having a website up. So it's not, that sounds really exactly. smart that you've got that inventory down. But you said something really interesting that I want to dive into a little bit where you said, you know what, we, we just took our best selling products and I'm just sort of like linking that to sort of the mantra of your brand, which I was reading that, you know, you guys are really up for like giving like women the choice of many, many, many different sizes, because I think that's why you guys started, where you felt that like that was a very underserved part of the market. Inclusivity. So how did you like balance that? Because I think a lot of e-commerce companies are going through this whole thing where they're looking at their inventory and they're like, you know what, there's no way we can survive doing exactly what we used to sell before. But I guess you guys have this extra complication of having this whole brand identity behind this. So how did you guys think through that? Yeah. So, so basically, we, we thought about um, what, what women are going to be doing now during this crisis. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact is they're going to be at home most of the time. So we, we decided to place orders with, uh, of products that we knew they would be wearing at home, like more pajamas and more comfortable clothing and um, things that they would be wearing around other people as well. Uh, so, so for us, we kind of, we, we thought about ourselves and what, what we would want during this situation. Mm -hmm. And we also like, we framed it on the website, on our blog, on social media that, you know, you can still shop on our website uh, from the comfort of your home and feel luxurious and feel comfortable and feel like, um, you know, you're still having this like great shopping experience from us, uh, even, even during these difficult times. And, and we have the options for you. Uh, and we have like, we have options for you, uh, for what you could wear during these times. And so we kind of just like thought a lot about the psyche of the customer and, and what it is that they would want during this time. And um, what we thought was back basically true because those products are actually selling out. Um, 